I'm going to show you two quick videos that for me reflect the right way and the wrong way for mainstream journalists to move forward in today's environment to regain public trust. The first is from a local news station in Iowa where the news director actually goes on camera, which rarely happens, and speaks directly to the public. The second one is Crystal Ball on Rising on the Hill. I'm going to show you the local news director first, and then we're going to talk about it. Then I'll show you Crystal Ball's video. Then we'll talk about it, and we'll wrap it up. So here's the first video from the ABC station in Iowa. In the aftermath of this attack, journalists need to be bold, and we need to stand for truth. So why am I here? To be bold and to tell you the truth. In the last few months, we've received dozens, maybe hundreds of phone calls, emails, and social media messages claiming the election was stolen, saying we the people working for this station who live in the same community as you, that we are the enemy of the people, that we are your enemy. We were told to remember Iowa went red in the election and we shouldn't bite the hand that feeds us, that we should know our place. We are not the enemy. And our place as journalists is right here, seeking and speaking truth, even if people don't like that truth. Maybe especially when people don't like that truth. Interestingly, the company that owns that TV station also owns the station where I finished up my TV news career. But I do not know this news director, and I barely know anything about this station. That said, I don't really quite understand what the point of this video is. Because the people who wrote those emails saying, don't forget Iowa voted red and don't bite the hand that feeds you. And I will stop real fast and say that emails like that do not get one's point across. And really, you'd, you'd think if somebody wants unbiased journalism that they wouldn't write, hey, don't forget who's in charge, you know, and you work for us. It should be like, hey, you work for the truth. So get to the bottom of the truth. Don't just, you know, buckle under pressure from us. But that said, these people are not going to watch that video, and I couldn't show you all of it because of copyright reasons, but you get the point. They're not going to watch that video and say, oh, you know what? I totally forgot that you all are the gatekeepers of facts and accuracy and truth, and you're here to tell us the truth even when we don't want to hear it. And I just forgot that. So my bad. Thank you for correcting me. No. They're going to watch it and be like, whatever, dude. And the only people who are going to applaud that are already on their team. So it's basically preaching to the choir. And I think moral posturing, really, because, you know, folks who don't like Trump or are like, yeah, you know, mainstream news, stick it to the Trumpers, <laughs> you know, tell them like it is. Those people are going to love it. Here, 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 which I'm sure journalists are doing, too. In fact, the reason I saw this video is because it was posted in a social media community and a lot of people were saying, oh, that's great. You know, the news director's talking right to the public and setting them straight. And I was like, what is the point of this? Just to let people know that you got their emails and they can go shove it. I don't really, I don't know. So the other problem that I have with it is that it does something that really bothers me. I see it more and more and more with journalists, instead of taking responsibility for where our industry has taken our country and the role we have played in where we're at. And, and even just discussing the challenges of the modern day well-intentioned journalists and look for solutions and just be honest with the public instead of continually fighting off the criticisms as if we deserve none of it. There are all kinds of hindrances to good journalism, especially in TV news how quick the cycle turns, how fast you have to have your story done every day, how short the story has to be, and just the way that the story topics are chosen and stacked in the show. I see lots of journalists constantly saying, don't call me the media, I'm not the media. That doesn't even make any sense, the media. It's like, but that's how people see us, okay? That's how people see us, they lump us all together. So they see you very similar to MSNBC or CNN or the networks especially since you are a local station that bears the call letters of that network. And we need to see, we need to be reading the research that's out there about how partisan people are that consume our news now. And we need to see that 
for ourselves. We need to be curious about where we're at. We need to take we need to take stock of what the research says about us. It's like we want to read about everybody else and the problems with everybody else and report on it, but we rarely ever want to read about our problems and report on those. And stop continuing to just posture as if as if we've just done nothing wrong. And we need to just keep shouting back at the public that if you don't like it, then sorry, sit down. You know, we're the gatekeepers. We have the truth. And if you don't like us, tough. I just, I don't think that's the right way to go. Not to repair public trust. I'll leave that there. Now I want to watch Crystal Ball. Our way of taking the threat seriously was to actually take it seriously. We weren't just looking to virtue signal and show contempt for the people who bought in to stop this deal, many of whom have very good reasons to distrust the media and every institution of government. When we think about how to do coverage, we think carefully about how to convey information in a way that it will actually be received and considered. Coding it in condescension and hyperbole, it's not really helpful. But I do have regrets, I have big regrets, about my own personal contribution to this tribal powder keg that we're living in. I regret the time I went on CNN in 2016 after Hillary made her deplorable comment and said smugly, sometimes the truth hurts. Overall, I regret every time I too easily played the role of partisan cheerleader rather than patriot. Every time I looked at large swaths of the country with contempt rather than an interest in understanding. Now, this is not to erase the heinous acts of those who directly fomented last week's riots, but only to say, if you want the country to go down a different path, you better figure out what's your part in forging one. It's the difference in the way that they report about it and how they approach the distrust of the viewer. Because if you notice, Crystal, she says, many of these people who believe this have very good reason to distrust both mainstream news, and the government. So what we wanted to do was walk you through the facts to show you what we were looking at as we were looking at it to once again peel back the curtain and give you a look at what we're looking at and understand your skepticism and try to meet you there and report these facts in a way that is not adversarial or smug or judgy of those who are sitting there thinking, uh, you know, the news, you know, we can't trust them. Instead of saying, well, those people, they're just, you know, the people who say enemy, the people, the people who say fake news, they're just, they're just, they're not even worth it. They're not even worth talking to. So just, just let them go. Instead, you hear her say she regrets her part in that tribalism and division. She talks about that moment where she said, the truth hurts about the deplorables. And I think if more people did that, we would be in a better spot. And you know what's funny is that Crystal Ball's not even like your traditional journalist, right? She's a commentator. She's, she's, she's partisan. She talks about that. That's her whole role is to talk about the news and politics from the side of sort of the justice Democrat or the progressive left. And the other guy was a news director at a, a, you know, a, uh, what purports to be an objective news outlet. So you have the opinion, the opinion commentator taking responsibility and humbling herself and being self-reflective, which really she doesn't necessarily owe anyone because she's never pretended to be, you know, in, in recent years. I don't, I honestly don't know where she was before MSNBC, but in recent years, I don't think she's purported to be objective in any way. She's she's been somebody who's been very clear about her bias, so she doesn't really owe anybody that self-reflection, but she gave it. And then you see the journalists are the ones who have been purporting to be the sort of objective journalists are still digging their heels in and 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 not offering the public a little bit of an olive branch. And we have to start doing that. I really believe that's one of the only ways forward. And it's really one of the only ways forward in any relationship where we failed and we all have failed. We've all failed. So it's dumb to say no matter what the relationship is, whether it's, you know, a journalist with the public or your husband or wife or your kid, you never take responsibility for your actions. We all say that, you know, in the quiet of our own offices and rooms or whatever, 
we would say, yeah, of course you have to take responsibility for your actions. So why aren't more mainstream journalists taking responsibility for where we're at? I don't know, but I think that's the way forward. So good on Crystal for talking about it. Maybe that local news station will see my commentary and do another video. I'd love to see it. And if you do, I will do a video about it and give you props. Again, don't forget to like, share, comment, and make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see y'all next time.